Our topic for the day is generic functions. A function is generic because it can take multiple different types of arguments, and it still does what it's supposed to do. So most of the functions we've written so far in this course have assumed that the objects they take are of a particular type. But we'd like to be able to write quite general functions that operate on any type as long as it has certain properties. So, here's the story. An abstraction might have more than one representation. We've seen that since the beginning of when we talked about abstract data types. For instance, Python has many sequence types, tuples, ranges, lists, etc. And those are all uh, types that satisfy the sequence abstraction. An abstract data type might have multiple implementations. We saw that this can be the case when we were implementing abstract data types just with functions alone, as you did in project two. And some representations are better suited to some problems. So in project two, we were just changing the representation because we could. But in the last lecture, we saw that different representations of sets would actually have very different properties in terms of how they scaled up as the size of the set increased. So tree sets were just more efficient in some cases than other alternatives. So a function might want to operate on multiple different data types because we might have different representations of the same abstraction, but as long as we can just assume a little bit about how those abstractions work and what they have in common, we should be able to write functions that handle any of them. And lots of functions like this are built into the Python language, such as map and filter, which have no problem operating on tuples and ranges and lists all the same, even though those are all different types. So today's topics are generic functions, what they are, some examples of them, and how to implement them ourselves. We'll look first at string representations of objects, which we've seen a little bit of so far, but there are details that we haven't covered, so we'll go through all of it. Uh, we'll talk about property methods. One of these appears in project three. And finally, we'll talk about multiple representations of data when we're using the Python object system, so classes, as opposed to just functions to implement our combined data types. 